Well, good morning. I'm out here this morning <clears throat> at a location that I photograph pretty frequently doing my landscape photography. And I just refer to this as the barn. <clears throat> now, I've got to work pretty fast here this morning, so I can't really give you a, a great big introduction because I did get out a little bit later than I like to. Sunrise is about 20 minutes from now. <clears throat> And this is when the best light happens on a scene like this. So I brought the, uh, the Nikon Z8 out this morning. And I'm going to put the 14 to 30 F4 lens on it because I need an ultra wide for this scene uh, to shoot this correctly. And I'm going to bracket my shots, which is kind of important on a scene like this because this barn over here has got a lot of shadows in it. Okay. Now, one of the things you want to do first off is get your composition right. And I'm going to step over here a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to see if you can see me. Yeah. As you can see, the sky is coming alive, okay? I'm gonna dial in my exposure. I'm gonna make sure bracketing is turned on. It is. It's turned on for five shots. Uh, at, I'm gonna make that a 1.3 increment just because I want to. Uh, I'm gonna use the two second timer and it's set up for five shots. And I'll show you that in, in the computer at home. I really gotta get busy right now. Uh, because we don't have a lot of time. The light's changing very fast. I love how, I love how the light's hitting that cloud up there. I've already lost the sunlight on the horizon I had a minute ago. Like I said, this stuff happens really quick. Uh, you gotta be on top of your game. Now, one of the problems with this scene, <laughs> and, and I can't do anything about it, there's a telephone pole with telephone wires running across to your, so I'm probably gonna have to take care of that in uh, Photoshop, but I haven't quite found the composition I want. The biggest thing is I've already got some side views of this barn. So my base exposure is one second at F11 and I'm using ISO 100. Now I want to shoot some of these at ISO 100. This camera is ISO invariant. I want to run it up to 500 ISO, which is the amplification secondary mode of this sensor and see if I can notice any difference in the photographs. Another thing I don't like is I got a little bit of a gravel road right here going into this barn. <clears throat> so I'll probably need to get a little closer. I am at 14 millimeters. Let's review that pictures. I'm just gonna let this video roll the sky is not as dramatic as I've seen it before. Like I said, I will show you um, some photographs I've taken of this barn before in this video. Now I notice I, I come here almost every morning, okay? Uh, I come down here on my way to work, especially in the month of July. Man, it's really changing quickly up here. Uh, I wish I had a little bit wider than 14 millimeters so I could get a little closer to this barn. We're just gonna keep shooting. Anyways, what I was about to tell you is I come in the month of July uh, is when you're gonna find your best sunrises, I think. Uh, that's when the summer sky is alive. So I stalk this barn, for lack of a better word. I come down here and drive by this barn uh, every morning on the way to work. I always get up, look out the window, uh, have my bedroom window to see what kind of clouds there are. So it goes, there's a lot that goes into um, landscape photography like this. Um, 
It took me a long time to find this location and I just found it by driving around looking for a, a good area for a sunrise. So like for example here, this, uh, this is facing east this direction. So I got a clear shot across this field with a, a, a tree line uh, that's just right at the horizon level that really isn't hindering me. So I got a really good vast view of this sky. Okay, what's going on? I'm gonna keep shooting here. And um, I've got it, it's sitting automatic right now. So you wanna have a good clear uh, view of the sunrise, or if this is a sunset, you'd like to have a clear view of the sunset. Now over here, this is not a good, a good, good location for sunset, and I'll show you why. There are, over here, there are trees to the west. So as the sun goes down on horizon, you would not see that as well. But although it would be an interesting location to have a sunset, and I have been down here before looking for that, but I just really haven't found that here. We're just gonna keep this video rolling. So um, I'm at ISO 500 F11 and I'm shooting at one sixth of a second. And um, we're just kind of checking out the noise a little bit on these photographs. Yeah, the sky is okay. There's not, there's not a lot of clouds on the left side here. There are some accents over there. I want to kind of move a little bit. Uh, I'll take you with me here just a second. The sky is changing again. Sunrise has not happened yet. You want to get here, and I'm late. You want to get here about 30 minutes before sunrise. Now, normally when I shoot this barn, I shoot it from over here, and I'll bring you over here to show you. Uh, there's a sign on a post right here that says private property no trespassing. Okay, let me show it to you right here. And this is normally the location I shoot from, okay? So uh, I've got a lot of pictures from this location. And I actually call this my no trespass barn because the sign says private property, no trespassing. And in this uh, composition, I don't have that driveway. And I can also see there's a little building uh, right behind the barn, kind of Got like reddish brick on it and stuff. So I can see that over there. Boy, the sky is really, it's really dulled out right now. I want to take you over here and show you. See, this is what happens on a sunrise. You can see how much it's changed already. Okay, it's, and, uh, it's not as dramatic as it was. The cloud up here is disappearing. I'm using my iPhone. 13 Pro to film this this morning. Uh, that was another thing too. I want a minimalist setup for my uh, videoing. I don't want to have to fool around with a hand holding camera. So I've got it set on my Yulanzi MT44 uh, tripod. It's like a selfie stick. It extends. Right now I'm just wait, waiting. Uh, it's one minute past the sunrise. The sun will come up right over that building out there. And as you can see, the sky is starting to change just a little bit on the horizon. So we'll keep a real good eye on this because like I said a minute ago, this is, these can be fleeting moments also in landscape uh, if you, to get the right shot, but they're repeatable. So there's a little bit of light um, coming up from behind this barn. I think I'm gonna move back this way just a hair. And I still got the fence in my photograph. I'm gonna just, Zoom in a little bit to about 20 millimeters. Let's go in a little bit more. This is one I've shot before, so I'm pretty familiar with this. But that post right there with the no trespassing sign, I'm gonna focus on that. And then I'm gonna take the other bracketed shots and focus on the barn. And then when I get those in the computer, I'm gonna blend those in Photoshop. Another tip on this kind of photography is just because the sun has risen, don't pack up. You need to stay on location for another 15 to 30 minutes. You just never know what's gonna happen. And another thing, if you're at a really cool place, make sure you turn around and look behind you. Not all the action's always where the sun's coming up. Some of the action can be behind you. So, you know, there's another tip for you. So I'm gonna change the height of my camera and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, I'm gonna take a photograph here and show you the difference between 
this height and how the post is in relation to the horizon. So what I did was I changed the height of the tripod in these three images. <clears throat> the first one was high, it was fully extended. Uh, and then in the second image, I went to a little bit lower position and you can see how the composition changes and the post is higher into the horizon. And then on the final image, you can see where the post is all the way into the sky itself. I don't find this one pleasing at all. I really prefer the first one where the post was lowest in the, in the uh, area. Plus the barn seemed to look better architecturally at the, at the, with the tripod extended up all the way instead of down all the way. So we're about 13, 14 minutes past sunrise. The clouds have really dipped low onto the horizon and I'm not getting a lot of color right now behind the barn. Uh, mostly gray clouds and I'm kind of waiting to see if something wonderful happens here and uh, like I said the sun is probably up off the horizon by now up above those uh, mountains back there so I'm going to hang out another five or ten minutes and see if something happens but typically what happens at this point once the sun gets up it turns into a white uh, light a bright white light and uh, the orange and reds go out of it. Uh, so we're just gonna wait and see if something changes here. Yesterday, when I came down to this location in the morning, I noticed that they had cut the hay in that field over there. And I was really, really hoping <clears throat> that they were gonna bale that yesterday. And a bonus would have been if they left the bales in the field. That would have been great because I would have never captured a photograph of this location with hay bales in it before. This is hay season in Tennessee and the other day I tried to go out and uh, I noticed they were cutting some hay in a field and I thought, well, I'll go back this evening and get a, a sunset photograph of the, of with the hay bales in the, or hay bales in the field. And from the time in the afternoon when they cut and rolled it until evening time, they took them all up and took them to the barn so there were no hay bales left. That's one thing about hay bales, you got to be quick. These farmers don't leave them lay very long. You're lucky to find one overnight the next day. You're very fortunate to find that. Hey, one more quick tip before I go. I always keep my tripod this time of year in my car. That's one less piece of gear I have to take out of the house. I also take my camera and, and shrink it down to a small shoulder bag, okay? Let me go get that bag and show it to you real quick. So this is a Think Tank, uh, Think Tank. <laughs> so this is a Think Tank Mover 30, mirrorless Mover 30 bag. And what I have in this bag, okay, I'm very mobile with this, okay? I can just sling this on my shoulder. I can do street photography with it or whatever. I have the Z8 in the bag, okay? I have the 24 to 120 mounted. And I brought the 14 to 30 wide, ultra wide with me in this bag. I also have a remote shutter release in here and that's it. I don't have any filters and really I should put an extra battery in here. But this is my, my mover bag, uh, no pun intended. And I bought this just so I could do this kind of photography quickly and I don't need to take my great big backpack with me every time I go. So leave the tripod in the car uh, so when you go out every morning, it's always in there. In fact, I have both my tripods in the car. You can see, she's up now. It's uh, almost 30 minutes past sunrise, so it's done for. So let's go home and get some coffee. This is my second attempt uh, in two days to photograph this. I did get up a little bit earlier this morning to get over here. The clouds are a little bit better. Uh, as you recall, um, as you call from yesterday's shoot, they had cut the hay in the field next to the barn. Well, guess what? The hay is gone. <laughs> they baled it apparently and it's now gone. So I'm going to swing over here. I see some, I see some dramatic clouds. I'm going to come back and get the camera in just one second and bring it with me. I'm going to try for a different composition today. 
sorry about that i left the camera over here i got the osmo action 3 running a time lapse uh, it's mounted to the car let me take you over here so i've set up down further down this direction from yesterday let's call this part two of the video um, since it's day two and this is what i'm looking at this morning and it looks a lot better than it did yesterday morning i love how that cloud is coming this way the sun is really beautiful today i am at f i'm going to change my f stop today to f8 uh, and i'm going to bring my iso back down to 100 okay yesterday i was shooting at iso 500 my base exposure is at um, half a second at f8 and so you've got bracketing turned on and vibration reduction is turned off five second timer set a two second timer here's the first series of shots this side angle shot is probably my favorite position for this barn uh, you'll notice a piece of the bob wire fence in the lower right and a piece of the telephone wire in the upper right. But what I like about this is right here in this field next to this barn are these little white flowers that accent the whole picture. I just think that foreground interest really ties it all in with the sunrise and the barn and the fencing and all that. I like to level my camera in the field, okay, just to make sure it's level. I'm not going to go through all the explanations that I did yesterday. I'm just shooting this morning, but man, I tell you what, these clouds look a lot better. It's like I said in the segment of this video from yesterday, you got to keep coming back. It's repeatable results, repeatable. Uh, and that's what I did this morning. I got up, looked at the clouds again, and here I am, okay? I'm going to try a bunch of different compositions right here. I'm going to move down this fence a little further away from the barn, see if I can get more of the sky. There's my car parked out in the road. And we gotta move right on down here by this telephone. We're about, uh, about 15 to 13 minutes from the actual sunrise. This place is starting to pop over here. That sky is looking really good. I need to keep shooting. I hope you can see that in the camera. What I'm seeing, it's really beautiful this morning. And in this image is another side view, but the sky was more vibrant. Uh, I did leave the fence and the telephone line in there. I would normally crop this out if I was going to post this image. And then the next uh, clip, you're going to see a short time lapse I did with the Osmo Pocket 3. It's a shame that I didn't get here. Well, it's not my fault, but they rolled the hay and took the hay up. <laughs> so it would have been nice to have hay bales this morning out here. Um, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and when you find a field that's getting ready to, to be baled up, um, don't count on it. It'll probably be gone uh, the next day, like this one. I mean, the hay was rolled up on the ground ready to bale. You can see the sun now. It's just starting to rim like the clouds in the mountains over there. Well, that's gonna about do it. Um, it's now uh, 15 minutes past sunrise, so the sun's trying to peek through those clouds and the color's pretty much gone. I got the photographs that I wanted to get. So thanks for coming along for this second segment here. Uh, the two day shoot actually. I was glad I got up this morning and checked the clouds.